Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Lethal Sales. Thank you all for being here tonight. Our topic is fixed price car selling or negotiated <laughs> car selling. Which is better? Which is better for the consumer? Which is better for the dealer? Which which do you prefer? What's your advice? Larry. Sure. Um, I, I think I'm I'm gonna come down in the camp of negotiated. A and the reason is uh I know how things went with Saturn when it was a fixed <laughs> price. Uh, I know that no matter what your price is, if you gave a car away for free, you'd still have people that want to negotiate and want to know how much you'll pay me to take it. So I, I think if we continue to train salespeople and motivate people and get everybody involved in the process, I still think no. there's profitability. I think no. I still think it can be a fun career. And, no. you know, that's that's just my opinion. No. <laughs> Is that a no, Doug? No. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. <laughs> so I'm going to jump in before. Oh, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I'm, get, I'm no, getting Dr. No, no here. Why, Doug? No, 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 no. I think that that's so antiquated. I think customers don't like it. The vast majority of customers would just as soon show me the price, show me the value, and I'll pay it yes or no. And dealers who think they can't make money in a one price world are idiots. They haven't figured out that, yes, you can. One price doesn't mean you don't change your price based on av availability. I just think that the idea of negotiating is like going back to a barter system almost. And it's time to get modern. We don't negotiate on other things. Why would we do it on cars? Well, not, not only that, customers, especially the younger ones, don't like it. They're not used to it. They don't care about it. The older people, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a harder sell just because they're used to it. But And that is one of the reasons why women especially hate buying cars because they're not salespeople. Like, you know, probably all of us in this room, and I'm Rhonda, I'll let you comment on that. But, you know, I think all of us on this room I kind of think it's fun when I go in front of a salesman because I tell my family, like when, if we did a timeshare thing in Vegas, right, to get free tickets, I'm like, here's what's going to happen. <laughs> and I joke with you guys and I make fun of it, you know, and uh, but I think that's one of the fears of the car business is, man, I don't know how to negotiate. I'm going to get ripped off. I'm not going to get the best price. And I worked for two billion dollar companies that are one price. One of them was AutoNation. We launched mm -hmm. it late nineties. And the other one was Marine Max, who was the boat dealership. Well, actually Tracker Marine Group owned by Bass Pro. Yeah. Now Tracker boats are more of a commodity, but interestingly, they fired, well, they changed their pay plan when they went totally to one price. Yep. And all the best salespeople left. Yep. They, and for good reason, but they figured we put enough information on our website along with the price that boats the same in New Jersey as it is in Santa Monica, except for the ship. Yep. Yep. So very successful, both companies, obviously automation and, and Bass Pro Shops. Um, yep. I think it works. You know, when you throw the trade in there, it's kind of now a wink, wink again, because yeah. Again, you can, uh, we all know, we can inflate the trade and, you know, that gives you some wiggle room. But I think overall, I think one price makes a ton of sense, but you have to explain to the customer how you do business up front because they, well, I did it. I think they, I, I did it. They can discount. Hey, Jeff, well, I, I, I think I, I'm not disagreeing with you or my friend, Dr. No Doug. But I think the reason that women so dislike dealerships is they're demeaned. They feel like they're in a strip club. They get asked, are you coming back with your husband or boyfriend? And they get talked down to. Um, uh, you know, wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a bunch of men trying to pretend they know what women like and don't like. So I think we should probably no. stop while we're at. While we're no, at no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to disagree with that, too. I've been selling cars and, and owning a dealership and been around enough to know. And I've gotten a ton of women hired. And I've I've counseled and trained a ton of women that were already on the job. Women women are are the decision makers. 
And well, Larry, I'm not debating like the decision makers. <laughs> I'm telling you, they, they we were. But we I'm not debating so whether stupidly. you have. I'm not debating whether you have some of the truth. I'm debating whether you have all of the truth, and that the women should be allowed to speak for themselves. Thank you. One hundred percent. Yes. I, I I believe if you if you slightly paraphrase the Bible line to Jesus was is truth unchanging law. You know you can't get all the truth from a Jewish car salesman from Philadelphia. <laughs> or, a, or a Jewish woman who buys cars in Philadelphia. There we go. Well, even the statement that women don't like salespeople, well, there's a lot of great women in sales, not necessarily automotive. So even the statement, assuming they don't like sales, they're not salespeople, I think is a wrong statement to say. I didn't say they I, didn't like sales. I said they don't like the way they're treated. As I said, they're demeaned, they're flirted with, and they're talked down to. Yeah, Here's yeah but I'm pretty confident that men don't like it either. <laughs> Um, right, yeah, I'm gonna tell you how it is. Is. Okay. Anybody that wants to anybody that wants to flirt with me is more than welcome. I'm I'm, All right. I'm very uh, I'm very <laughs> I think it's, it, it's very but interesting. Guys, the other product that you can negotiate is housing, and the real estate market is captured by women. So why do women do well in real estate, not the auto industry? Why are they man, expected I, in real man, estate? Well, a lot of, but a lot yeah. of women in the real estate industry used to be in the auto industry. <laughs> May I make take a poke at the 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 question and try to answer sure. that question? So, so automotive sales is a short term sales cycle. Would we agree? Relative nope. to home sales, okay. Mm, sometimes, yeah. I, I believe that I'm. I believe that the statement I'm about to make is largely true, and that is largely men are not as relational and long term relational as women are, and so I believe that. Yep. Men thrive in the automotive industry because we can, because we want immediate gratification. Immediate meaning in the next seventy-two hours, preferably the next two hours. Women will nurture the relationship over the longer term, really get to know their client, and quote unquote become friends with their client. We try to be friend. Men try to become friends with our clients after we sell the car because we're our motivation is because we want to be their friend. We just want to sell them something else. So I believe the reason real estate's dominated by women is because it's relational selling, not instant gratification selling. Feel free to Tony, push back. Tony, I agree with you completely on that. And that's what's so sad about not encouraging women to get in because everybody on this program and anybody with some brains knows we need to look at our business long term, you know, capturing more customers, having better service retention. So if if one sex is geared more towards long-term thinking, we should encourage them in every way, shape, or form so we capture long-term goals rather than short-term. But I, I agree with you completely, Tony. Well, so I, you know what? You I guys go back to, to the to... original the original question is one price, yes or no, it does it work. And you know, speaking about that and taking the sex out of it, whether they're male or female at, at this point, it's subjective. Um, I would say that. Um, because I work at a very large Toyota store and we are a one price store. We've been a one price Toyota new car store since uh, about a year and a half before COVID. And then we switched over to a one price used car store really at the beginning of COVID. And uh, what I found in that process was for used cars, uh, it became an easier thing to do during COVID because of inventory supply demand uh, prices going through the roof and people were paying more than they should have for used cars. So it made it easier to quote unquote switch or change up the culture for used car one price because of COVID. Um, I'm not so sure it would have been as easy without COVID. Uh, new car, it became easy because of digital retailing and we're a Toyota Smart Path dealer. And so it was just, it was something that Toyota got behind with us as well. And so we are a one one price, one touch dealer for both new and used cars. But I, you know, somebody said earlier when they switched a dealership over from a negotiation to one price, they lost the veterans. And I think that's going to happen primarily because the veterans are quote unquote um, sales experts. Mm -hmm. And when you're trying to uh, spend more time with a customer in the negotiation process, you have to become a negotiation expert. Once you take the negotiation away, now you can hire and train people who are more about product uh, and really focus on the product, focus on the value, 
and not so concerned about the negotiation process. Okay, well, you're, I'm going to jump in here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Doug was, wait, wait, Peter, Doug was trying to get in and, and he got caught in the crossfire between me and Tony. Let him comment and then you jump in. A couple in. of things. A couple of things. One, I, uh, I don't know who the gentleman was who just spoke, but I would also think that being one touch makes it easier to hire people as well because you have a process. But all that being said, uh, Larry, you alluded to the fact that, you know, the long-term view and hiring women and we should be taking a longer term view. I think one price dealers have a longer term view because they can bank on integrity. They can say, this is what we do. Okay. This is how we do business. And I, if I drop your price for you, I have to drop it for everybody. We're not willing to do so. So I think that that it, it lends itself to a longer term uh, type of scenario for dealers. That's a very valid I also, point, Doug. I also think it's about time. If you can make it a one price deal and you can make it fast, it's all good. I mean, I did a survey recently on LinkedIn about how long it should take. And pretty much the biggest one was two hours, but one hour was a very strong contender. And 30 minutes was close. So if you can make it faster and it's one price, people will pay. I'll go with that too, because the number one complaint forever has been how long it takes to buy a car. Yep. Okay. I uh, I gotta give you my opinion and whether you like it or not, you're gonna get it. The <laughs> the whole thing about the car business for a bunch of dinosaurs moving in a that operate in an archaic business moving at a, a glacial pace. The the whole thing that people want today is instantaneous gratification, i.e. time. They want to spend their time themselves. They don't care if it's one price or negotiated, but if you add in negotiation, it's gonna extend the time and that's something that they're not willing to deal with. So it yep. the business will lend better to a one priced, one person, one hour store, which is something that Doug's company absolutely turns around and screams from the rooftops now having said that if someone gives me time i will pay for it i will pay for it and the whole thing about negotiation negotiation is a two-way exchange of value and and the values cannot exceed the price for acceptance the value has to exceed the price so if once we get there and we got to understand that negotiation is all about listening and once we listen to our customers and we hear and the customer is being heard they will become a customer so i am a big proponent of the one price system i'm a big price of the one person system and i'm also a big proponent pusher of the one hour system so it is modern retailing at its best because right now we can go right to from stem to stern on a pricing po or on a purchase without even touching a dealership. So why do we have to add in roadblocks in a dealership by negotiation? And how are you going to asinine? How are you going to make a two hour purchase if you got to go touch the desk three times? Well, the desk should be eliminated. The desk should be eliminated. The F and I office should be eliminated, and it should be a sales coach not a sales manager and and the the business should be run by what is profitable what it, pure and simple here's the profitability margin for a use a new car let's do it at this price the end of story one price there you go we know what it is why have people at that point not just have bots and ai running your dealerships i well, think it takes the they, people out of it totally but, uh, no it doesn't people, no it, no, it doesn't. Not at all. Not at no, all. No, it doesn't. That that's a fallacy. That is an absolute fallacy. That if people Total think fallacy. It, look look at one of the biggest guys in our industry, one of the biggest titans, David Spizak, who has more friends in this business and more people at manufacturers level and everything else. What did he do? He went out and bought his car end to end online and and picked it up. He passed two dealerships to get it get to his car. Because why? Time was worth more to him than sitting in a dealership. So, Peter, let me ask you this. If it doesn't get rid of people, 
What people does it keep? What people does it keep? It keeps brand ambassadors. That's what it keeps. And that's okay. what and that's I, what I, should be there. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good with I'm good with that. But what do those people look like? Give me the avatar of the brand ambassador. Okay, so the avatar <laughs> of the brand ambassador is pretty simple. There's two people involved. There is a person that is going to walk them through the sales process, <laughs> and then there's going to be a person that delivers the car to them and goes through the actual understanding of the automobile. That has been done by many companies up in Ontario with great success and they do not have a situation where they they have to run back and forth to a manager to get a price they don't have they they can actually talk to the customer they can go through the customer they can look to the best opportunity for the customer to purchase that car whether it's cash finance lease a, a a buyback finance it could be any number of different pet ways but they're looking out for the customer and they have a higher retention rate so if and i understand you if i understand you correctly there there's two people that remain the person that walks them through the salesperson and the person that delivers the vehicle if you will or that's tells utopia. Them well, that's okay, utopia. So, peter so what peter peter's pain peter you know that's a utopian scenario because you have, in order to have what Peter described, and that is, that is, and I'm telling you, it's utopia. You have to have people that are so well coached and so well trained that they can, in fact, do everything. Yeah. The fact is that for the vast majority, uh, you still need some coaching until you get to that utopia. Does well, utopia? I agree, exist? I agree with that, Doug. But let's be real, Peter. I mean, you're painting a great scenario, but let's be real. He's asking, what are the, what are we looking for? You're still going to need in most stores some coaches, and you're still going to need a little bit to get to Utopia. Yes, but, you're gonna need some but you cannot so say, you cannot say that. that people cannot be trained, and it'll take forever to do it. What you have to do is you have to make that step forward, and I guarantee you can train your staff within three months <laughs> to be in that position. Yeah, but in the three months, you're going to need more staff here. No, you're going to be decreasing your staff in three months. Yeah, but you're going to need people in the in the interim while you're doing that. Ian, I took hey, I took Peter. a store and I forex their volume <laughs> in eighteen months doing the exact same process. Peter, let me ask you. Much. I reduced the staff in three months. Peter, let me ask you. Something. Can I can I just jump in here sure. for a second? I just yeah. want to play the as a viewer. Okay, yeah. do you know the shit that we got to go through to deliver a car right now? Yes. You know what our, our franchise yes. and and I'm and I hear you as far as like the buying experience online. That's great, but that's also in in my opinion a limited audience. How many times yep. can we have transparency where here's our prices, that and the other, and the customer wants to beat the shit out of us for the next two hours and then blame yep. us? Like let's put yep. it at. Like let's really huh. put it at. You're not giving me enough for my trade. Or I went, you know, they're holding us hostage for an extra nickel. We're still getting yep. shit on the dealer, just to be clear. Okay, yep. and and yep. we're all on the same playing field here. I'm just telling you, like coming okay. in as the advocate, I hear it, I see it. But let's face it, the people that bought like Teslas online, they had the freaking money to buy the damn car in the first place. And if the car yeah. blew up and broke down, they had a backup car. Now mm -hmm. we're we're with this electric and this that and the other making it quote unquote affordable is total yeah. bullshit because it's all breaking it. down. And you know who's got to deal with it is guys like me on the front line. Yep. You know, this whole process. And it's, it's a little bit of a dream, so to speak. And I'm not saying, listen, I'm doing everything I can to be proactive, but I'm still getting my my, my ass kicked every day by, by bullshit. And, you know, the problem with the manufacturers, guess what? I If I could take the keys to my dealership and hand it over to the manufacturer and say, here, you run it for 60 days, they couldn't give me back the keys fast enough because of just <laughs> how we <laughs> And exactly. listen, I'm, I'm perfect. I just, but I know the majority, there's a lot of good viewers and it's like any other occupation. One or two bad seeds ruin it for everybody. I mean, it, that's just a fact. And it's just, you know, we're yep. all trying to get through it. Hey, Ron, 100%. I, I agree with you because who has put this in the, in the customer's mind that they have to they have to battle for every single penny on a car? Who has put it in their mind? So, let me ask you something. Right, if they battle the with every million. single penny in the car, then how come... They're going online and car. They're paying whatever Carvana or they're paying whatever CarMax or they're paying whatever Tesla tells them to pay. 
But yet when they mm-hmm. walk in the micro room, they still want to they still want to beat us up and grind us out. So you I must have a history of being willing to do so. Yeah. It, do you it, have a history of being willing to, to negotiate? And the reason I ask that is the I would reason also I suggest ask that, that, that all is, of these problems are fixed by a better fixed absorption. Well, here here's one thing I'm going to say, and I, and I I hear what you're saying, Ron. I've I've been doing this for 42 years. I've worked at Chrysler stores. I understand what happens in 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 the mass, uh, the mass. I've worked in the Toyota store, which is is the largest Japanese brand. I've worked in BMW, which is the largest, and BMW and Mercedes, which are the largest German brands. So I, I understand what happens, but it also comes down to the people and how they're trained to react to the question of, hey, no, I, I need more for the trade. I need more for this. I need more for that. And and going through it. And yes, in, in a situation where you, you're dealing with someone who's going to buy a $30,000 car and a, car, a person is doing a, a 40 or 50 or 60 or $80,000 car, you could say that's much different. But I'll tell you what, the guy who's buying an 80 or or $100,000 car is more of an A-type personality and wants to grind you more than the guy that, that's trying to get financed on a $30,000 car. So it's how you present it and how you bring it to them and say, hey, you know what, we're we're looking to help you with your transportation needs that's what we're here for and it's very simple you can go online you can absolutely go online and in two seconds find out how much i paid for this car and you can find out what the margin is and how much i'm going to make what the average selling price is it it, it's not hidden from anybody but to your point that's to your point that's exactly what i'm saying like you have all the information but yet they come in and they still want more. Like they're trying on though. Like, and so, give it. What are we training? Because and I'm just playing the advocate here. I, yeah. I everything you're saying is a thousand percent. But when they come in, well, here it is. It's not as transactional as that. It's just not. If okay. I were to give you what you say your car is worth, and you were, and this is what you pay, so and so forth. It's always it comes down to. And listen, you know, people don't realize. Well, throw in a free bed line or throw in, you know, uh, running boards. Throw in what? And throw, you, you want another $5 million of shit. You can't do that online. You can't do it with the Tesla. You can't do it with the fucking CarMax and everybody else. Why are you doing it to me? Why? Exactly. That's, that's my but, point. Exactly. But, but here's here's the here's the situation. I had I had a gentleman talk about this exact point with me who worked at a, a BMW dealership in LA. And he says, you don't understand. I get a guy who comes in looking at an $80,000 BMW and he'll drive an an hour and a half away to save fifty dollars a month on his lease, <laughs> and I said to him, "I said, then you're, sh- and, and forgive me for saying this, then you're a shitty salesperson." And he he goes, "Well, you don't understand. You 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 don't know what I'm dealing with." And I said, "No, I I sold BMWs for seven years. I know exactly what you're dealing with. A person who buys a BM, uh, eighty thousand dollar BMW has a hundred and seventy five thousand dollar income. That means he makes seventy two dollars an hour. He's not going to dr- if you give them the reason to drive an hour and a half to spend spend fifty dollars more. Then you then you're failing your customer because you're you have to tell them and explain to them that why the reasons to buy at your dealership." why to buy off you what what value are you bringing to the equation for them are you the the penultimate expert on the this business are you the best person to teach them about a dodge ram pickup are you the best person to talk to them about a jeep are you the best person to talk to them about a hornet which is a a PHEV, if I remember correctly. So are you the best person to talk to them about that? Why do they want to buy off you? Are you going to give them the service? This is the reason why why people buy off you, and that's why you re that's why they'll pay more to buy off you. And that is a number one thing. I know this because I worked at a JLR store. We were 10% higher on average GP than any other dealership in the country. And we didn't 
care. It's not that we didn't care or we wouldn't negotiate with people. We showed them the reason why they bought off of us. And we held 27% of the market share in Canada for JLR. And there was yeah. 37 dealerships. We owned 27% of them. So that's... But, but, but the thing you got to remember, Peter, I'm not saying that to beat you up, but if you're used to as a dealer or even as a salesperson or sales team doing things one way, you, you've really got to educate them. But more importantly, and I'll use the example when I work for a, one of the largest Honda stores and one of the smaller ones, really it's about having the, the balls, for lack of a better term, to say, hey, like this is how it works and this is what it is. And, and the reason I bring this up is Honda, both in the U.S. and Canada, is cutting dealer margin by 55% in Canada and TBD in the U.S. Basically, you know, the dealers are going to have to hold the line. They're going to have no choice. Because the reality is, if you think the other manufacturers aren't going to do the same thing, you're probably mistaken. Exactly. It's going to be a one price model, period. And the reason is the manufacturer is saying, hey, we don't want to give you that profit margin because you we know you negotiated out of the deal anyway. So we're just not going to give it to you. Yeah. If the manufacturer could figure out how to sell directly to you and service you, you I wouldn't agree. need us. And okay. I agree. And, and, and that's it's proven from. The margins that they're taking. Listen, we were just on this call yesterday. It's an mm -hmm. absolute disgrace what we have to face now. It just goes from bad to worse. It is literally oh, like it is like 2020 all over again, except it's happening to the people that own dealerships. So it, it's yep. like this whole thing, but yet we'll continue to grind it out. And guess what? When they start losing volume, they start losing market share, they start panicking, all this other stuff. And it doesn't help when you got to send out these messages. Oh, hey, we're sorry. We're going to reduce our trucks by 10%. That's taking a $100,000 truck. We're going to reduce it by 10 grand. And that's basically saying because we screwed up. Like, are you freaking kidding me right now? Like, well, the, the, exactly. You know, but this is, you know, this is the other side of it. But all that being said, it's like, you know what I look like going to a customer or, or now three days later, somebody looking at a truck and it drops by 10 grand. You know what happens now? They come in and they want more. The manufacturers exactly. drop 10 and they think you should drop more. It's like, but here, like, here's here's yeah. the thing: the public did it to themselves. They look at the unions and what the unions did to the big three in the last year. They right. did it to themselves. Yeah, and now, right. they, did it, they did it to themselves. But you know who's taking the hits? Me. The dealers. Guys like me yes. Taking, the you know, the dealers like, are going to hit. Think everybody on this call somehow or some way are taking a hit. Ron, you know? Ron, Ron, you were in in this business in two thousand and eight, correct? Yes, I was. Yeah. So Listen, was I. I, 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 I and we watched. Business, I, I grew up around this business. So and we watched. I, we watched the dealer consolidation in two thousand and eight when sure. when the when the, they they. Went I've been through two thousand. I've been through bankruptcy. I've yeah. been through it all. You were yeah. you were, you were around during the K car years. You were around. Yeah. You, we've we this business. I was, I was a lot guy. And did undercoating. Okay, yeah. so that's how far I go back. So so <laughs> we we've all seen the challenges in this business. And, and, and you know, I hate saying this, but Howard was a Nissan dealer. <laughs> Howard, like you want to get kicked in the teeth, be a Nissan dealer. It 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 it, it was horrific trying to compete with the Hondas and the Toyotas of the world. And this was pre pre Hyundai and and Kia. No, wait, wait a minute, Peter. You can't knock a brand that has their their head guy smuggled out of Japan in the trunk of a car. <laughs> Two cases. Suitcases. <laughs> but well, let me just put it this way, okay? This is how I look. <laughs> okay? and, and you know, after the call from yesterday and everything, I woke up today and you know what? It doesn't matter what my brand is, I'm a franchise dealer. Okay. And the at the franchise, what that gives me, it gives me banking, it gives me service, it gives me the ability to work on warranty, it gives me a lot of opportunities. So also gives you an also one so right now, but we, I mean, I had the highest, you know, whatever regarded franchise, it's still a franchise, you know? So, and the one thing I will tell you is, you know, again, I'm second generation. My father had used car lots. He was smart enough to know that if, you know, in order to be in this business, you know, not that you could make it as used car dealer. There's some very wildly successful used car dealers out there, but he was savvy enough to know that, you know, with having a franchise, offered so much more. So his goal was, hey, if I'm going to be in the car business, let me be in the new car business. And then I got a half a shot to stick around. So hence, fast forward, we're second gen. 
Um, and we see the value of the franchise just by having it, even though it sucks right now, you know, that the quality, yeah. all the other things are going with it, but it, you know, it doesn't matter. Like I said, and the crazy part about it is like, you know, the history, you know, you had guys who uh, had gas stations and Honda, the Honda reps were knocking on their door saying, would you like to do it? Like, man, I would have loved to be part of that era. You know, that, yeah. that's. So, <laughs> so let's, let's just go back to the, the situation at hand and, and yeah, I I completely understand the situation that you're in as a CDJR dealership because of of all the dealerships out there, you're you're probably the worst uh, next to what's happening with Honda um, from the manufacturer level. You you have a manufacturer that oversupplied you. And then you have a manufacturer that decided to take and cut all cut all the MSRPs to make, and the manufacturer doesn't look like an ass. You do, and because you sold the car, not and, and that's that's the unfortunate part that and I I I see your pain and I feel it because I'd be absolutely pissed myself if it happened to me, and I'd be screaming. But here the the reality of it is. How do we work out of it? I'm like the average CDJR dealership has what two two sixty day supply right now, and it's it's horrific. We got to get you guys out of it. And how do we do it? Is well, we might have to change the model, and the model might have to change regardless of of the willingness to change. And the model might have to change to to assist that opportunity. Now as as a a person who's worked in four levels of this business, I've worked for the OEM, I've worked for a dealer dealers, I've worked as a vendor, and I and I've been a customer. So I've seen the the four four corners of this business very well. And one of the things that that happens is we have the greatest chance right now, right now over any other time in the car business in the forty two years I've been in it to in to engage that change and we can change it in so many different ways. We can change it with digital retailing. We can change it on how we, how we get information. Like there's a number of people on this call that actually have systems that are, if I was back in the dealer days, my ROI on, on, on my spend would be through the roof. Jeff has a telephone system that is, is incredible. Uh, Russell has a, a proven ROI in the fixed ops that is absolutely insane on the return. Like Mike, Mike has has ways of figuring out what people think about you. It's it's incredible what can happen. The BDCs that uh, with with Wendy and and Duran, and it's just there. There's opportunities there for everybody. Go ahead, Russell. You're br you're muted. Ooh. Got that. So just a, a, a hard reset because my mind is like, uh, I don't, what the hell are we talking about? <laughs> we were talking about negotiation. Then it came, then it changed into what are we going to do to fix the industry? Okay. Because the industry <laughs> right now is broken. Well, and, our, our and original it's, premise. It's, it's, been, our it's, original been premise been, it's been broken for the last 39 years that I've been in it. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll was, second that, world, Russell. The world, huh? I'll second that. Yeah, it's the world was. Stuff. Hey, listen. I remember Third. when I remember when we signed up with Autobytel when we had uh, we just got our first website with you know ultra fast uh, AOL dial up modems, and I mean that was it. The whole freaking world was going to change because of internet links. Okay, then it's this, then it's that, then it's something else, then it's then it's Carvana, then it's uh it's it's um, Saturn and and the one price model. I get it, and that would be wonderful. But I'm telling you what. It ain't going to happen overnight. It ain't going to happen in my lifetime. 5% of the population of the dealerships, yeah, they, they may be able to achieve that. Some already are, but the vast majority of it, it's going to take decades to turn this baby around. You said it earlier. We move like a glacier. I mean, what, what, I mean it, it ain't happened. I agree. The training, all that. I love to be sold. I'm a salesman. I love a good salesperson. I will pay. The, the, the analogy you used earlier on the guy that's going to drive what, an hour to save $50, he's a freaking idiot. 
uh, if, if he makes $72 an hour, do the math. He doesn't, yeah. he knows how to spend it, but he doesn't know how to make it work for him, obviously, because he's stepping over a dollar to get a dime. And exactly. I, I understand there's people out there like that. And I agree. I'm just having fun. I agree with some of the things that people have been talking about and there it needs to be changed, but it don't matter what we do. One price, you're going to be negotiating something people. I mean, we've been doing it for so long. It's going to take a long time and people are going to, now, can it happen faster because of technology and the way things are moving? Yeah, but it still all boils down to one thing, people. Everything that. boils down to people, right? I just, just to tail off what you're saying, Russell, I just want to say that we are, we, we, we are a relationship business, we okay? Are. There, there are people that never in a million years would have bought a Chrysler product, but because of relationships, okay, we have managed to make those deals. Now right. I'm a small dealer. I'm a small guy in a small town. But my whole point is this. I believe the 50% of my existence is because, you know, of the relationships and the repeats and right. stuff like that. And then when you mm -hmm. follow the of a car dealer, you know, it's okay. You start out as a sale and you get promoted to the manager. Great. Maybe you buy the place. That's all well and good. But you, you have to be able to bring up the next generation yep. to set them up. Like, so I have a book of people that'll buy off me. And what I, you know, what I try to do is, here, see this person. I'm yep. right in the office if you need me. But yep. here's the thing, and I have to explain it to him. There's technology in these cars that even I don't understand. Right. Let him do the job, and then I, I'll hand, you know, if I have to, again, everybody has a different layup, a different sure. structure. I'll have Absolutely. a different way of, of scoring, so to speak, if you want. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we are a relationship business, you know, period. I, I, I will just, you know, go to my grave. No, I, 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 I totally that's agree. A big part of our yeah. success. I agree. And, and I love, hey, Ron and, I, I love Ron what's and being said. After Russell, but I want to yeah, jump in. But I love, you, I certainly love what's being said. And I'll tell you what, I really appreciate somebody that knows how to sell and build a relationship with me. And you know what? I'll pay more, even if it's a one price. I, I don't care. It, 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 it's, it's the relationship where I feel like I, I was acknowledged. I counted. I made a difference. I was part of this process instead of being put together. Experience. I could feel, I could feel just as disgruntled on a one price as I could off of a discount. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey Russell, the topic. <laughs> to, to show you that I'm dialed in with you and, and I wasn't, wasn't trying to butt heads with, with Doug Reeves. <laughs> Um, I'm in, what? I'm in Florida. Oh. Oh, okay. uh, I'm in Florida and I'm having guys, I got to tell you, I wish I could just freeze this week. I, I can't tell you how much damn fun I'm having. I got 15 people in a class. I got three dealerships here fighting over them. I think I'm going to get all 15 hired, which is a fat week. I signed up five new dealers, which made Rhonda very happy. And uh -huh. I asked the people in the class, cause I'm trying to teach them <laughs> how to be wildly successful. How many of you applied for other jobs? Everybody raised their hand. They want to work. I said, how many people mm -hmm. other than, than me or my assistant Pam reached out to you? Not one hand went up. So it's right back to the same thing. I'm, I'm, I, I'm probably the least technical guy on this program, but I'm the first guy to reach out. I'm the first guy to tell a joke. I'm the first guy to put my arm around somebody. And believe it or not, guys, and Howard's going to find out himself because he's going to be a partner <laughs> in crime in me. I taught for three hours and 20 minutes. And the only reason I sent him out to lunch is I want him to be fortified when they got interviewed. <laughs> so I'm, I'm fully aware. Doug, you're not wrong. The one I get it. But yeah. my thing is a little bit leans towards my group, my buddy, Ron boss. And I'm not using that term loosely. The two of us nuts have become friendly. Our wives are friendly. People still want to negotiate. People used to come into my Cadillac Hyundai store and say, uh, I just left Saturn and I want a one price deal. Perfect. There's the MSRP. The hell you want from me? I'll get the salesman to write it up. So I'm not, I'm not being difficult, Doug. And, and I certainly understand the world is changing. I always quote Franklin, Ben Franklin, when you're finished changing, you're finished. But I'm a little bit more in the camp that people always want to negotiate. They always want to haggle. That and and I I'm just not sure that we're ready to flip a switch. Now I'm not stupid. There are dealers that have done it. Tony oh. Thorstad's place is rocking and rolling. There's oh, yep. plenty of places. But I also think there's still room yep. for people that want to negotiate and want to haggle. And the winner there is still one of the number one reasons people buy a car, okay, is the salesperson. Right. And this number one complaint is still it takes too long. It didn't take me too long. 
because I didn't go to the desk nine times and tell him, oh, yeah, he doesn't have a truck. Oh, wait, he does. If you're efficient, if you understand it's better to talk to and try to sell three people than one, if you're ruthlessly efficient, but at the same time, smile in your butt off. Russell, you would have been so happy today. Room full of people, some sharp ones. I asked everybody, what do you say to the guy that says, I only have 10 minutes, I got to go watch my son play ball. And of course, I got, I can do it in 10 minutes. And I love to say it, it's the truth. Only if you're a hooker at a casino. You're not selling a car in 10 minutes. The answer is, what does your son play? So I'm not saying that we don't have to be smarter and how we use people's time and how we make it easier. And we're transparent. But I'm also saying, I don't think we're ready to freeze out the other thing. Doug, I'm nuts. You know it, I know it. Larry, no, you know, wait, let, me, let me comment on this, because I, I think you bring up some good points. Look, Larry, I... Can't we just I stop with you here. saying I got some good points? I like that part. Yeah, there's wait, 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 Go ahead. I'm sorry, Doug. Doug, go ahead. I said, go ahead. Wait, I'm sorry. Here we go. So here's my thought. One, I would hate to be a dealer right now because you're between a rock and a hard place. All right. The OEMs are pain in the ass and customers. No, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Slow down because my friend Ron Boss just called the suicide prevention hotline and they put him on hold. Well, let, let, me hard hard right? All right, let me Let me continue. But if I'm a dealer, what I'm going to control is how I handle customers. Now, whether I want to go one price or negotiate or what have right. you, the right. fact is, if I focus my attention on how I am handling customers, how efficient I am, if it's predictable, that you know that if you go to dealer X, you're always going to be treated this way. And if I can separate myself from everybody else and offer a great experience, regardless of how I'm handling negotiations, I have set myself up well because half of my problems have disappeared. All I no, have to do is worry about the OEM okay. and all the crazy shit they're going to do. But the customers will be happy and my employees will be happy. And that's where they should focus. Okay. I'll, I'll, I agree with you 100% there, Doug. But I will also add in that in every single survey, price came comes in around seventh in the reason why people buy a car seven and having said that i believe because of that i think negotiation went out when this phone stopped working and that it is absolutely <laughs> without a shadow of doubt if we can we can move the customer now we, we, peter, unfortunately what's, what's higher on the we, list peter what's uh, higher on the list is payment higher on the list no no, payments no. not payments not up on the list. What what's on the list is convenience, experience, location, availability. They're all higher on the list. That's what the customer says. But what yeah, would, I don't believe that. What would the dealer say, Peter? Yeah. Price. But the dealer said so. But here here's the thing. When I went out to buy my Jeep, I didn't care. I I wanted the vehicle. I looked everywhere to get the exact vehicle i wanted i wanted a jeep sahara 4xe high altitude and zenith silver with gray leather and i wanted a safety group in it there was four in ontario i had to go all over ontario to find it and get it so it it has it, it, price wasn't a factor it was the vehicle so it, these these things we have to learn how to talk to customers the customer's journey has changed. The customer, we're all going back 10, 15, 17, 20 years when, when, when the internet wasn't even, was in its infancy. Now people spend 17 hours on the internet prior to entering into a dealership. They spend 1.2 dealerships. Why is it 1.2? Because one of them screwed up. Yeah, but, but Peter, Peter, still, you still have a huge percentage of people that come in for a specific vehicle and leave with a different vehicle. Yes. So doesn't that kind of fly in the face of, of and by the way, it, it, just when we're you and me are done, we haven't heard from Wendy or Duran Cage or, or Darren or Joshua, and we're, not, we, we're, we're already at 752. I'd love to get yeah, some Sorry, we'll opinions. go late. All right. We'll go late. We're passionate. All right. Let's so. hear from Wendy. Who is He's muted. Still unmuted? Come on, Wend. Who is 
There she is. Who fell there asleep? Fell Don't asleep. Hold back. I didn't. Loud voices put her to sleep. <laughs> um, yeah, I would like to defer to Duran first, if I may. <laughs> Duran, you're up, my buddy. Oh, I love it. You're muted. There you go. Wendy. That's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you weren't paying attention I'm either. Drop right? you right in it, no, was, no, 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 no. I was paying attention. I was listening. Like this Just was kidding. a great conversation. Awesome. Um, but I might, if I lose you guys, then Wendy, you pick up, okay? Where because I'm in the, I'm talking about Tulane down Louisiana, Mississippi area, coming back. But I heard a lot earlier from the gentleman at the Chrysler store. And so that's, I just left training three different stores. It was a, and one of them was the crisis point. And everything that he's saying is, is valid. It is a challenge time, right? But to my, to my friend Larry, what he just said is so key. Now's the time to really focus in and hone in on those basics because so many people right. are going to switch to other pieces. They're open to their options. But, you know, me, I'm, one thing I would say on this conversation is just make sure you're paying attention to your data as well and look at the story that it's telling. You know, look, I'm talking about all the way down to your team's purpose. How many appointments are they setting? What does the outreach look like? Are they sending their videos? Like, make sure that we've done everything possible to be successful. They are not excuses, but not because what I find out in most stores like when I'm meeting with sales managers here is that there's a lot of meat still on the bone right a lot of meat still on the bone of things that we can do but we take certain customer situations and we make that gospel like that's how everybody's going to be when most times it's a smaller percentage of people that for lack of better words screw us or say the wrong thing or treat us the wrong way but now when times get tough and I'll finish it with this when times get tough, I strongly encourage going back to those customers that are like your low-hanging fruit and focusing on those and your retention people, your service customers, your equity mining, your data mining, your phone ups. Make sure you're listening to those things. It's just back to the basics. That's all it is. And that's what I'm hearing on this call is like the market shifted. So just make sure that you're you're looking at every area of opportunity, using your social media, using your CRM to the highest level and engaging with your team, then after that, make pivots on the marketing side to make sure that everybody's on the same page because you might need to change your marketing message as well if you're attracting customers that are, for lack of better words, jackasses. You know what yeah, I mean? And, so look okay, at Durant, the market as well. Duran, Duran, question to think about it. There is nothing stronger in our business than the percentage of people that come back if it's repeat referral uh, yes. or bird dog. So if we don't stay in touch with our people, if we don't make them feel valued, if we don't work in conjunction with our service department and retain them just being in our circle, in our cycle, look what we're doing. We're dooming ourselves. Exactly. Yes, if, 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 you, if you take one referral per customer per year, you will multiply your, your output by 4x in three and a half years. That's one customer. That's all you have to ask. Get Peter, in. Peter, I don't I never told you this story. I went to work at a dealership the last week um, of August 1988. I'm not making it up. They used to sign recourse with dealers. I, I, they're out of business. Yep, I, know recourse. Bank. I remember those okay. days. Every so the deals were so fat that managers used to quit to work as salesmen because they could make so much gross. My first full month in September, I was top salesman. I wasn't any good. But I walked up and down Olden Avenue in Trenton and knocked on every door. The deli. Uh, what? This stuff is not complicated. If we make it clear to people, boy, am I glad you're here. Boy, am I glad you're a customer. Boy, would we love to have you. Howard, I told people today it's my favorite thing. Um, I, I always say that if they say they're not buying today, we tick off. Gosh, I'm sorry. I thought you loved the car. I hope it's not the dealership. I hope it's not me. If all three are good, what's wrong with saying Hey, you know, I don't get it. You like the car, the dealership, you even like me, even though I'm a little crazy. Please tell me what I could do to earn your business. I'd love to have you as a customer. What the hell is wrong with making it clear to people we value you and your business? 
because we have a huge I, the reason that Russell Hill always says correctly the <laughs> same from 40 years ago is the dealership says one thing and the practical application is the complete opposite. You know, yeah, we're we're family here. Yeah, the Manson family. Okay, there, there's there's no there. They, if you're you're not hugging the employees, they're not going to hug the damn salespeople. Wendy, are you okay? We already deferred yeah, I'm great. to Duran, who rode off the road and got eaten by an alligator. So let let's hear something snappy. When when well, when I got to speak in. Hi guys, I I came in real late. Sorry about that. But uh, Wendy, where's your drink? Oh, um. It's coffee. I'm sorry. I started at 3 a.m. Oh. today many times, so I need And coffee. Rhonda and Wendy, so both Ran of out of toothpicks. Go ahead, Wendy. Let's hear it, baby. Okay, we, so you know we love your input. to piggyback on Duran because he and I are kind of like me and my my brother from another mother, Sean Armour, who complete one another's sentences with regard to BDCs. And Duran, I'm thinking, is, is cut from the same cloth. So, you know, you have to get BDC or you don't. And what we're struggling with is... Um, and the sales side and the service side, you know, I was in in El Paso um, working with a, a, a group service BDC for the Viva stores. And, um, you know, the challenge is real. I had they, they're, you know, the GM, one of their sale, their GMs was saying, hey, can I get you over in sales? Can I get you over with sales? And Patrick's like, no, no, no. We need six months for service. We got to get that in order. Then we go to acquisitions. Then we go to sales. Um, so. Sales is in dire need um, to teach the people that are post COVID or simply forgot what it was like pre COVID, how to sell a dang appointment and get people in the store. First of all, without pissing them off and pre qualifying them over the phone because they don't want to spend same tune as before. You know, every call that should be about options on an internet lead or whatever, options and financing and vehicles, et cetera, and getting them in on the opportunity and the options. You know, they're, we're here to sell people a car, not that car. So, you know, it's still the same statistics. Decades later, only 13% of the people that start out looking at a certain vehicle end up buying that vehicle. So we need to sell uh, hope and we need to sell opportunity to our customers and get them in the dang store first and foremost. But when they beat them up over the phone before they even get there on the sales end, then of course they're exhausted and their butt hurts from being beat over with whatever they're the phone or whatever they're being beat with. And it's it's not a good experience. Not only that, but they don't have the tools they need in the service BDCs. You know, I was I was uh, begging Steve Ressler uh, two weeks ago on our human side of AI call, Steve, please build something for service in your CRM. They've got 17 stores using his CRM, but there's not squat for service BDCs. So this team of 10 people representing 10 stores is making outbound service calls with agendas where they're writing their appointments and spreadsheets and notepads and legal pads. So are you kidding me right now? How are you going to move a team to the next level? How are you going to improve or even set KPIs and set goals for a team to get to the next level if you're not inspecting what you expect and if you're not measuring anything? So we have to start where we are, wherever we are, sales, service, whatever, Make sure that our our people have the right tools to for even retention, because we're not. You know, I started my first BDC in 07 with with this kind of ruler. I still have my first smile while you dial mirror with the rabbit on it because it was April of 07, and my niece uh, was a college student and was one of my first agents part time with my daughter. So all the simple things. They're still using them in 20, what year is this? You know, so, um, so many things, where do I begin? And maybe the reason that so many people want to one touch is because they're simply sick to death of the experience they're encountering otherwise. Well, Rock, it, Wendy, it's, 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 <laughs> I can't say it's a proven fact, but I can say it's a definitive fact that people prefer to eliminate roadblocks. That's okay. why when you see the average automotive website that's out there and how many pop-ups and how many questions are asked and how much the drop-off is, the Horrible. average drop-off of a, a automotive website is 
percent. That's the bounce rate. No, it's it's actually higher. But it, yeah. But to to your point, Peter, it's well, not about the website, even though there's good and bad websites out there. It's about okay. the options you're providing to the customer to reach the dealer. Okay, when you look but, at websites, and it's not even automotive; it's like websites in general. Hold, hold on. There's hold still on, three Ian. options, and those options are all bad. Hallelujah. Look, look, Amen. Look, hold on one second. Look at look at uh, Sewell Cadillac in Dallas and buy a Cadillac on that website. You can go Peter. end to end without providing yeah, any but, information. But but Peter, again, what are the options on virtually every website in the market? Pick an industry, doesn't matter. Vast majority, probably 99% or at least 90 plus percent are call the dealer, fill out a form or send an email. Those are the three options. Those right. options are a chat but that, Those that's, options that's are again, all bad. Where we're They're failing. All bad that, and, Ian, that's where we're failing. We're failing in digital retailing. We're failing. Yeah, but but it, it, it isn't even the digital. World. It isn't the digital retailing, Peter. That's what you don't understand. Right. It's about people want help from people and they want it when they want it. They don't want a, a digital retail for the sake of digital retail alone. They want help okay. now when they have a question. Hey, wait a minute. Speaking of people, I haven't heard from my buddy, Mike Larkin, and he hates to be left out. Mr. Larkin, give us some insight, my buddy. Hey, this is a great conversation this yeah, week. That's, that's called a pattern interrupt. I love it, Larry. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> um, my best friend is is in the market for a car. His transmission hit the dumper. And and I asked him. Wait a um, minute. Does he like Chrysler? Because Ron Boss would love to meet him. All right. Well, ship it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's. I said, what are you looking for? Sorry, he's like, whatever. You're right. <laughs> I see you, Ron. <laughs> and we but, know yeah. a guy named Don Brady will ship it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he buys a boat and he lives in lives in Hawaii. Um, but I asked him what he's he want. And he had very specific hey, he wants nothing older than a 2018. He wants under 40,000 miles. He wants um a reliable like Carfax that didn't get in the wet accident. I'm like, okay, so let's go and look online and, and see what we can find. He found uh, a Chevy Equinox 2019 with 12,000 miles on it, like brand new. So he went for a test drive. Everything was great. The The salesman was like, hey, you know, I'm going to treat you right. Uh, I'm going to you know, uh, this is the car you want. Uh, are you falling in love with it yet? Kind of, you know. Um, but he's like, look, um, I have a budget, okay? And I, I'm not going over $18,000. Oh, no, no, don't don't worry about it. We'll work with you. So he got to the fact that, okay, let's, let's see the bottom line here. And he wrote it on a piece of paper and put it in front of him, 25. And he's like, wait. I told you when the car was 18, if any, you know, if you're not willing to work with me, I'm walking away. He's like, well, I mean, where'd you get that? And he goes right here. And he put his phone in front of the guy's face. That says 18, 495, does it? And is that the car? Yes. But, um, oh, uh, we, we, we don't work with that company that has that car on it. Well, isn't that the car? Yeah. So he's negotiating, but he's negotiating at the price that was listed, and he's trying to get, you know, he's, he goes back to the boss. Hey, Michael, boss. Michael, you're you're going around in circles. Call Ron Boss. He has some cars he can take the engine out of. Eighteen thousand is no problem. And it's about time. Very, and the car will be more fuel efficient. <laughs> the bottom line is, uh, we we had this uh, car dealer up here called Car Right. I don't know if it's a national thing. But it was, you know, you get what's advertised online and there's no haggling. Okay. Um, for this particular person, he likes that. But they were so busy, they got bought off by CarMax. So there is no such thing anymore. I'm looking at it from the customer point of view into the car dealer. And I find that uh, in these rooms and, and a lot of the rooms that I'm in, it's the, the car dealers are looking out when they should be putting the perspective of what are the customers looking at going in. And I'll, I'll, I'll drop my mic. Thanks. Okay. So having said that, I wrote an article 
uh, just a little while ago, and it had a picture of two Rubik's cubes on it. One was jumbled, and one was one was solved, and it was basically perception and reality. They're the identical Rubik's cubes. They both have six sides, nine squares per side, same color, same everything, but it's how we look at things. And yes, we nine out of ten times being in the industry, we look outside out through the windows rather than in through the windows. So we have a different perception of what is actually going on and what people want. We also turn around and we go to 20 groups to get best practices. Well, the best 20 group you could ever have is take 20 of your customers and I'm talking 10 that bought and 10 didn't and bring them into your boardroom and have a meeting with them and get their information because that's going to tell you exactly what is going on in your dealership. They're going to tell you how it's working, if a, a one price strategy, if a negotiating strategy, why they moved down the street for $10 less, why they did this, why they did that, why they wouldn't return for service because we we're losing 70% in our service. Why is everything happening? Let's talk to our customers. That's your 20 group. And very few people are out there wishing to do that. Go ahead, Paul. Oh, Larry, you're on mute. I said we have Paul Brobson and Wendy had her hand up too. Paul, what do you have in mind? Good evening, everyone. Um, and sorry, I just stepped in before. Um, I, I, I actually, as much as it pains me to agree with Peter, I'm going to agree with Peter. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Because <laughs> I bring that outside perspective. I can't say it now because I'm seven years in the business. But for the first three or four, I was like, "What are you? What? What are you people doing? What? Why do you do it that way?" How long have you been in the cave? Like, I just hear these things. And then, of course, I the, the non-technological, how far behind you are in that sense. Let's not even go down that rabbit hole. But here's the thing. And I actually had my best car buying experience ever was buying a Saturn. It was thorough. It was complete. It, I knew how long it was going to take. And it took longer than, than I thought it would. But he... But he told me that in advance because he literally read the owner's manual to me page by page. It was terrific. It was a great experience. And again, it was one price. And and But what made it great was not the one price or the low price. It was, it was the way it made me feel. It felt frictionless. And to Peter's point, what happens is we put so much friction on the site that we've conditioned people to go around all the friction and just get to whatever. Do they have a thing that says internet price? Fuck it. I'm excuse my French. Sorry. Put this word jar up. Sorry. Um, I, I'm moving on to the next site because I'm not playing that game. I already did. I already, I already wasted an hour and a half of my life out of that 18 hours in those 18 <laughs> sites. I'm not going to get that hour and a half back. So what I'm saying is the consumer's mind, we it's like a game to them. It's like, let me avoid the minefields. If I hear this, I instantly am going to go over to the chutes and ladders side because I don't want to go down that ladder. And I certainly don't want to go out the chute. So you, you have to change your perspective to the consumer. And I'll just share this with one of our best dealers and my friend, Patrick, who, who will tell you, I just let them eat the way eat what they want and eat it the way they want if they want exactly. to eat a, 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 a chicken burger with their hands or they want me to bring out fine china i'll do it sorry Larry. exactly you exactly. don't give people what they want they'll find somebody that will give them what they want exactly but they're going to tell everybody else so in all these times we're struggling with margin compression this and that and you're talking about how we get a referral and how we're going to get this and that People will tell them. you get a you put an experience like that in front of them. You do that. You become a problem solver. You become a friend to them, and not wait a minute. Where's the landmine? Where's that that barrier? Where's that? Okay, you're coming in for an appointment. Like, you know, just be different. It's not that hard. Everybody else is acting a certain way. Truthfully, it, the people you serve, if you're a vendor or if you're a dealer, just be different than everybody else, and you're good. Exactly. Exactly. Be the differentiator. Be the disruptor to the industry, and you will see that you will gain market share. But my last thing I'll say about this, this is my my take on it. And this is an observation. I don't have full data on this, but this is what I believe, um, that unfortunately, um, being different 
in this industry oftentimes mean running to the side of the boat where the new shiny thing is. Digital retailing, you guys talked about. Okay, yes, you can do that at Sewell, but the reality is hardly anybody actually goes through that whole thing. But every dealer, not every dealer, but most dealers ran to that side of the boat. Oh, we better do it. We better do it because he's doing it across the street. So we should do it. Do what? Well, I don't well, know. It's I, digital I, retailing. Well, what is that? On. I don't know, but everybody's doing it. We should do it. Okay. And, that, and when it doesn't work, then everybody crawls back in the cave because they they knew they needed to be different. They thought this was a thing that would make them different. And now it didn't do that. Paul, it's what I want to know, the, stati the statistics I want to know, and I'm pretty sure I know them, are how many dealers daily do walk-arounds, do role-playing, and actually sit with their salesmen Pump them up and say, man, if you're in a slump, I'm going to help you break out. If you're rocking, let's keep you rocking. And do me a favor, keep that smile going. The Not many, Larry. are more important now than ever. Yeah. I did so, Larry, 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 uh, uh, Peter, hang on a sec. I did a seminar today for a dealer that sells two to 300 cars. And uh, I, I talked to the dealer principal after the seminar I did. And you want to know what I said? I said, Joe, listen, what's the number one issue you're having right now with everyone? He goes, my managers, uh, people. He was so distraught about a bunch of different things. You are totally right. You nailed it on, a, on the head. It's about the people. And are you guys talking, you started the whole thing about um, uh, no haggle, no hassle, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In 1993, I got my first sales manager's job at a Noah Hagel store, uh, a Chrysler dealership. And right out of the gate, Mike, I heard you talking earlier. Our whole pitch was all throughout the dealership. And I went from a high pressure negotiation Ford store right into at the age of 26 as a sales manager at a Noah Hagel store. And our first line right out of the mouth was, welcome to Malfew Dodge Chrysler Jeep. My name's Darren George, your name is. Did you know that we're a Noah Hagel, no hassle store? Boom. You go right into the pitch, right out of the gate. So anyway, I just wanted to say hi. Yeah, but you still, is you know what? The, the thing that we forget how to do anymore is make eye contact and smile and listen. Exactly, And actually Larry. engage totally. people the way they need to do it. Totally, and all totally, these systems totally. and all these AI and all these processes, they're fabulous. It's but if they're not wedded to a human being, they're useless. Larry, I totally agree with you. Hey, wait, we got another Darren, and we haven't heard from my good buddy, Darren, but Darren, shed some light, illuminate and elucidate, my buddy. I love what you said there. I was uh, I was managing a Hyundai store for a few years, and we hired, I think, four new salespeople uh, same week because we needed salespeople. And, you know, let's just do it. So we spent the next six months every morning, 8 a.m., First thing in the morning, empty the sales floor, ever in the boardroom, and we just practice role playing. And you know, Larry, your clothes there spot on, right? It's like you like me, you like the car, you like the dealership. Like, what did I do here? Like, you send, send them back in. Did you do the clothes? You, you practice those word tracks, and it's like the negotiation is part of both building rapport. And negotiation doesn't have to make someone feel dirty or slimy. If it does, and you're doing it wrong, you haven't done the human part of the negotiation that makes sense. It's it's a transfer of enthusiasm, and if the customer's right. not excited. And the salesperson's not excited, then you're done. So, regardless Darren, of Darren, it's, one it's because not, it's because of how monolithic our thinking is. Yeah. Listen, everybody on this program knows what I know. Here's what salespeople talk about all day: it's not sex, it's not sports, it's that there's no business. And then when a car pulls up, five guys go, "Oh, he's probably not a buyer." Send the rookie out. How do you fight that kind of thinking? Everybody <laughs> I ever met in my life, I thought was going to buy a car for me. Ron Voss uses me. Ron Boss called me up and said, can you help me? I says, are you smoking weed? I'm the greatest. I'll get you tonight. By the time he hung up, he was like, shit, maybe I'll fire some guys just so we can hire him. If you're not <laughs> positive, if you don't believe in yourself, yeah. where are you going? Larry, Larry, yeah, Larry, going? Uh, Larry, I bet you have the same story I do. And so does Peter. And so does everybody on this board here. Uh, the, the highest gross commission I ever made in my entire life was a guy that everybody went, I'm not talking to that guy. I went up to that guy and he was the chief of an, of an Indian reserve and he flipped his Lincoln, didn't even question the damn thing and went right into a brand new full crank Lincoln and it was a $12,000 gross deal. And he kept asking me, are you okay with it? He goes, is this all good? And I went, 
like I said, you're getting it's 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 perfect. Yeah, what do you? Wait, wait, wait. is is Trudeau it, aware anyway, of how yes. much money there is in Indian reservations in Canada? Because he hates to miss a taxing opportunity. <laughs> hey, but let's not. It doesn't this matter. This is where. true. This is true. So you don't. You you'll never know who your customer is. You don't. No. He, no. 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 But you can make one assumption, Darren. They're buyers. If we get all of them. the assumption that they're all buyers, rather than all of them, Larry. Far as too old, it's too new. It's the mindset when you everyone's a buyer. Things, you know, they always quote Henry Ford, and it's a lie. It was Lincoln that said, "If you think you can, or you think you can't. Either way, you're right." And so much of this is, po oh. and in a world where everybody's negative, to be positive, to smile, to let people know, boy, am I glad you're here. It means everything. Hey, have we selling missed car anybody? Selling cars, is, selling cars is so easy as long as you keep it simple. And understand that it's really complicated, but it's really easy. Hey, Josh, just get, why don't you give nice us your two cents? Josh, you there? Yeah, trying to hit the mute button. No worries. Um, one of the, the from a guy who has never sold a car, okay, and I've never been a GM of a dealership, been a GM at a collision store, but never been a GM at a dealership, and contextually. My wife and I just bought a 24 Camry and long story short, our buying journey started a year ago over the course of, of the last year, we've had four full days test drives at very times for various reasons. So not only am I 1.2 dealerships, I'm probably closer to like 15 stores. 15 different salespeople, 15 different pitches or experiences, the works. Uh -huh. Wait and a minute, Joshua, what I have, you given, have you given any consideration to heating up some pins and sticking them in your eyes? Because you probably yeah. get the same, the same feeling as a result. <laughs> it, I, I will answer that with the, the statement that both my wife and I turned to each other while sitting in the salesperson's office at our local Toyota store on the car that we ended up buying and going, I just want this to be fucking over. <laughs> um, I am now, making a part fortune of that is our tonight. Own fault. A fortune. Part of that is completely our own. Sorry. Oh um, Ron, I owe no, no, you it's a okay that you're all foul mouth. She just put a deposit on a Jaguar. So keep yeah. up your horrible behavior. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Um, Appreciate it. Right. Part of that was our fault because we're in a situation where Instead of just having one uh, broken or old beater in the driveway, we effectively got two. Hmm. So we still don't really know whether we made the right choice last week or not. And that was that complicated matters. But I will tell you from a walk in the door standpoint, what's the experience been that no one, the old, no one out of all of those stores ever talked about no hassle, no haggle. No one ever talked anything about that in any nature of any of our experiences. The best experience we had was at the Volvo store several weeks back, simply how, how we felt walking in, how we felt talking with the, the salesperson, how we fought, felt driving the vehicles. The whole shebang was at the Volvo store. And we ended up buying a Camry simply because we, no matter how much we loved uh, the XC60 after driving it, we just couldn't justify spending it. Whether we could afford it or not is irrelevant because we could. We just couldn't justify uh, uh, the expense considering we got 85% to 80% of the same sensation in, in the Toyota as we did the, the Volvo for like $600 less a month. Don't forget, this is monopoly money up here. <laughs> so, from a from a no hassle, no haggle to negotiation, I don't care. It, it, I don't really care. The experience changed everything. At the end of the day, we were debating between buying a Camry and buying a hundred thousand dollar Volvo. So, price to me, whether it's a, a fixed or or negotiating, it it didn't change the outcome of our decision. What did change is how we felt literally sitting in the car and whether we wanted to spend the money or not. And it had absolutely nothing to do with anything the, the salesperson said. 
So I don't know that that doesn't answer your ne- negotiation or fixed uh, com- or question or debate. Because at the end of the day, it had nothing to do with the dealership, absolutely nothing at all. And it had nothing to do with the, the, whether we negotiated a price or not. It had everything to do with the actual price point period based on what we were trying to fulfill. So, and, and the last thing I will say before I get off my high horse is that from a vendor standpoint and somebody who's been in service for 20 plus years, I don't think there is any question of which which is right or wrong i think both are it's an irrelevant question because all of it is solved by a healthy fixed ops absorption if you don't have your service department right it doesn't really matter what you're doing on the sales floor because you can cover any oops any anybody that's you know you're one in ten or two in ten that are absolutely grinding the absolute gears out of your sales managers and f and i you can absolve that with just a healthy service department if you're turning out 110 percent fixed absorption who cares if they're grinding it? Just give them the 50 fucking dollars, call it a day, improve the experience uh, and make no. sure that you exemplify your experience and service. And how are you going to get repeat no. referral business if you lose the people through an oil change system or a tire place? And now you lose not only all the service business, but the chance to get them back in. Absolutely. And that and that leads into why service and the service drive is the next important thing next week right that's uh, next week yeah. all right and- does anybody we we're, we've run almost an hour and 25 minutes does anybody have any thoughts or questions we we cannot tell you how much we appreciate you being on and offering your opinions and your thoughts uh ver- very much appreciated does anyone have any uh any thoughts before we uh we thank you all again and sign off Hey, Larry, we didn't hear from uh, Howard. Uh, I thought we did hear from Howard. Howard, did you at least made some <laughs> No, he, he, just, he just nodded his head when I said Nissan was, was the uh, the ugly stepchild of uh, Honda. Well, I'll, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll sum it up real quickly because it's late and everyone's got to keep rolling here. At the end of the day, it's been said already, this is a people business. And it doesn't matter whether it's one price negotiated price if the experience sucks pardon me your Jeez. customers are walking out the door and they ain't coming back all yeah, right i agree 100 you know, and it you know in my dealership as you noted uh i own several new nissan dealerships and we ran a very tight process but most important you know every dealership in america has the opportunity to great to create a great experience uh, the reason I'm here with all of you right now is because a year ago I went shopping for a car without telling anybody that I own car dealerships. I did an undercover boss thing, and after going to six or seven Highline stores, I said to myself, "My God, everyone forgot how to sell a car." Uh, so here I am. But well, if you, uh, Howard, if you, I'll, I'll 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 change that one bit. They didn't sell, forget to how to sell a car. They forgot how to treat a person. That's yeah. Well, you know what? The kind and of and that's so where a car too. comes into play. So yeah. that that is exactly why I'm in here. That's why you're here. Josh just experienced it. We've all experienced it in the last little while. But I, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. And tomorrow night on automotive innovators and disruptors, we have the the modern dealership and the service drive and how we can improve it. All Thank right. you all so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Take everybody. Care. This was a great discussion. See you all Thank next you. week, I hope. Have Take a good care. week. Take care. See you all tomorrow night.